Namaste. My name is Rishab and I'm an architect based out of New Delhi. I'm a lead AP in building design and construction and in today's video we're going to learn about lead introduction. This video is part of a social initiative where we are trying to build a community of professionals who want to work towards mitigating climate change. Do hit like, subscribe and even leave a comment where you find where we can improve our videos. So when we talk about any building rating system, first we need to understand the need of building rating system in general. For example, in India, the economy is growing to grow from $2.9 trillion to $10 trillion by 2030. This means people will have more money and better economic status. This would have a direct impact on built environment as the need for houses and commercial spaces would also rise. Similarly, share of construction industry in, G in GDP would also rise drastically by 2030. More houses means more carbon footprint. Built environment consumes energy in form of electricity and gas. So it is safe to conclude that energy consumption per capita is directly proportional to economic growth of the country. While the country is working to increase the energy production capacity, which would also mean incre increasing the carbon in environment, there is also a need to optimize the use of energy and resources in the built environment. Hence the need of building codes, energy codes, green building rating systems come into play. Uh, now let's talk about what is USDBC and LEED. USDBC stands for United States Green Building Council and LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. USDBC was formed in 1993, that was the time when we started talking about climate change and the big uh, hole that was coming up on the Antarctica of the ozone, ozone layer. So USDBC was formed in 1993 to pr promote sustainability within the built environment. Their mission statement states to transform the way buildings and communities are designed, built and operated, enabling an environmentally or social res socially responsible, healthy and prosperous environment that improves quality of life. USDBC defines sustainability not just in environmental aspect also but in social and financial aspects. In my personal opinion, I think the word sustainability has been overused. Everything what we see in today's world is technically sustainable. But it's about how we define sustainability that, that's actually what provides the meaning to the world. USDBC manages various streams which includes lead product, community engagement, imparting education of green building and sustainability, advocating for green building laws and nurturing startups at grassroots level. So USDBC is basically working on different different ways to improve the sustainability. Not just one way which we know, like I, I knew personally uh, USGBC through LEED, but later on I came to know how they're working on different different levels. The LEED rating system is developed by USGBC but is administrated by a third party organization called GBCI. GBCI stands for Green Business Certification Incorporated. So when we register for the exam and the uh, when we register for lead uh, green associate or lead ap it's all administrated by gbci and even the certificate that you'll get after you uh, after you pass will be issued by gbci and not usgbc this is one point that you can remember for your lead green associate exam which we will talk about in the further videos in which we we'll, uh, which will be more detailed and will help you prepare for the exam so now let's talk about what is lead rating system and various other things related to it so LEED basically provides a framework for healthy, efficient, carbon and cost saving building. It is one of the most prominent globally recognized symbol of sustainability, achievement and leadership. So most of the places I think where you will go, you will find a sticker of LEED certified building. The buildings following LEED framework or that the buildings following LEED framework or that are LEED certified tend to save money in daily operation and maintenance, have better efficiency as compared to other buildings have lower carbon emissions and produce a healthier space for its occupant. While all LEED certified buildings achieve such goals, there are different tiers of rating. The lowest one being LEED certified in which the building has to score above 40 points and the, high, and the highest being the platinum which in which the building has to score more than 80 points. Higher the rating system means better performance of the building. For a project to be certified as by LEED, it requires a minimum of 40 points for silver 50, for gold 60 and for platinum 80 points or more. So when we keep on increasing the uh, rating, the buildings tend to get more efficient and more uh, operational, operation friendly. 
so the cost of daily operations and maintenance goes down the health of the occupants and the let's say if you're getting a office space lead certified so your uh, your employees are tend to be more healthier so they tend to take less sick leaves as compared to other non lead certified buildings that have been found in some researches one of the good example of lead platinum building is apple park in california that has secured 87 points as per lead 2009 new building fra- new construction framework which gives it a platinum rating uh so th- uh, when we go for lead certification there are many categories on which the, the building is rated and this is the scorecard of apple park in which you can see clearly see on which in which category the building has been rated how many points for example in, in, in sustainable sites the building has awarded being awarded 24 points out of 26 points which is pretty high and in energy and atmosphere the company uh, they have achieved actually to complete 35 out of 35 points uh, which is like quite remarkable so now that we know what lead is what should lead project aim to accomplish whenever we see a lead certified project what should we expect out of the building i mean let's let's find out so as per lead version 4 the primary aim of the rating system is to reverse contribution to climate change while enhancing the human health and well-being of the occupants protect and restore water resources protect biodiversity and ecosystem promote sustainability and regenerative resource cycles build a greener economy and lastly enhance community and social equality so uh, in in the order of what what i said and then the figure that you can see that's how the rating system has been designed so the maximum points in the rating system is is to be given to the criteria that help you reverse contribution to climate change while the minimum being to enhance community and social equ- equality that's how the lead complete framework is designed so now that now that now that you know what lead is what lead project aims to achieve and now the question comes how do you become how do we design or manage such projects i think the first step uh, of going about would be to by becoming a lead green associate so what exactly is lead green associate a uh, lead green associate is a credential given to a person with broad understanding of various lead concepts lead rating system impact categories intents of categories and strategies to be adopted to making to make the building sustainable it is a credential that helps people associated with architecture engineering and construction industry to get their foot into the world of sustainability if you have this credential you can work as a sustainability consultant throughout the world but even if you don't go for these these uh, uh, these credential systems still you can work very sustainably if you have a good knowledge of active and passive cooling systems in building and various sustainable techniques how you can make building more sustainable if you're interested in this credential i would strongly recommend you to follow along on our future videos as we provide free exam preparations training in our videos uh, so then what is lead ap or a lead accredited prof- uh, professional like what i like what i told you in the beginning that i am a lead ap in building design and construction which is lead ap bd plus c a lead ap is a credential given to a person who has advanced knowledge in green building plus an expertise in particular rating lead rating system there are broadly five lead specialties that you can see on the uh, screen which is lead building design and construction primarily for architects as it helps them to design as per lead specification lead homes used for rating homes lead neighborhood development used for complete neighborhood neighborhood rating lead interior design and construction primarily used for by interior designers and lead operation and maintenance used by professional to, professionals to optimize existing and build, existing building performance so uh, lead ap onm uh, is used post construction usually given post construction that you have that you have built a building and then you want to go for a lead uh, uh, sustainable rating let's say lead uh, lead rating system then that's where lead onm comes in and the third tier credential name is the lead fellow to be eligible to become a lead fellow a nominee must hold a lead ap with specialty credential for a minimum of 8 years in addition a nominee must demonstrate a minimum of 10 years of exceptional impact with lead in four out of the following five mastery elements well i mean that's a long way to go but like for me personally i have cleared the tier 1 lead ga examination and in the tier 2 lead ap bd plus c i can even opt for going for all the credentials of the lead ap if i want to if i have a job like that or i want to learn further but for now i think that's good enough for me 
so what are lead uh, lead categories like i was talking to you about in the apple park example and for, uh, first of all i hope you're enjoying this video so far so please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions and please hit subscribe and like button it will help us grow and provide free content on the sustainability that the world is in real need for moving forward let's discuss what are lead categories uh, first is location and transport it has been recently introduced in the lead version 4 of the lead uh, the lt category focuses on the ideas to reduce the cost pollution and depletion of resources related to daily transportation of people to and from building for example if you have a building in a dense urban setting where there is a good metro connectivity and a bus connectivity so the lead actually promotes you building on such sites because it will provide occupants to have a lower carbon footprint while they are coming and going from the office second is sustainable sites site design is one of the most crucial factor of building project the sustainable sites category in the rating system addresses the environmental impacts of the site design and management heat island effect and light pollution of the building site the third one would be uh, water efficiency as the name suggests it deals with addressing water holistically looking at indoor use outdoor use specialized use and metering it also recognizes non potable water usage and alternate alternative water sources for example that if you are making a like a farmhouse or a some landscape based project lead would promote you to have a xeriscaping which requires which basically requires giving no absolutely no water to your plants after a certain time so that they are self sufficient in for that for that environment fourth one is one of my favorite as an architect energy and atmosphere this category looks at reducing energy demands increasing energy efficiency replacing fossil fuel with renewable energy and carbon offsets eliminating the use of harmful refrigerants and monitoring ongoing performance and this is the category where apple park scored 35 out of 35 points fifth is material and resources it uh, primarily deals with material conservation environmentally preferable materials products and waste management it not only deals with choosing the material based on the life cycle but also things like characteristics of materials such as extraction location and recycle contents like for example if you have if you let's say build want you want to build in the most sustainable material let's say for example wood and uh, but you're getting the wood all the way from you know 5000 kilometers so the co the carbon offset produced in bringing that wood from away from 5000 km to your site makes it far more far, far less sustainable than a locally available material let's say a uh, concrete it, it might it might actually work like that um, so that's why their material uh, uh, category material and resources comes into play sixth and the second last category indoor environmental quality i personally found this category to be very interesting it deals with increasing the uh, quality of indoor environment through indoor air quality occupant comfort acoustic design thermal comfort and access to daylight and views and finally the last uh, innovation and regional priority this category basically incentivizes the project team to earn credits that meets specific needs for a specific region of climate it creates a room for innovation and sustainability and and is and being rewarded for it for example if you are building in an environmentally sensitive zone so what kind of precautions and what kind of what kind of strategies are you adopting to make sure that your building is not impacting the environment and that's where you you can actually score points in this category so that's pretty much overview of the lead rating system so after you clear the lead green associate exam which is a tier 1 exam you will be awarded certificate like this i cleared my lead exam lead ga back in i think may 2021 yeah that's what it is written in certificate and when you clear your lead specialty you will get a lead ap certificate I cleared my lead specialty exam in building design and construction back in July 2021. Uh, on the left, you can see the scorecard, which you will be able to see right after you give the exam. And the certificate might might take two to three days to process. I scored around 193 out of 200 in my lead specialty, which I remember I started studying for after just after my lead green associate exam. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, that's how like the process got very simple. So lastly I think one important question that you need to know I I think is why you should opt to become a lead green associate or a sustainability professional it would be a first step to get into the world of sustainability everybody everyone can become a lead ga i mean you just need to be above 18 years above 18 years and accept the terms and conditions of the gbci first impact you will personally feel is that you are able to design better which with nuanced knowledge of lead strategies you will be able to design better spaces choosing right materials and build sustainably 
you would be able to develop strong knowledge of sustainability that is used around the world. Like personally, when I got into the market to shop for product, I do look out for EPDs now, also known as Environmental Product Declaration. I did not know this before giving my lead exam. Uh, lead credential definitely improves your employability. I mean, uh, everyone who everyone wants to work with people who know about sustainability and have a good knowledge about it. So the lead GA credential is just an, just a credential that proves that you have that uh, that certain set of knowledge. It improves your paycheck, of course. Like people with lead credential are highly in demand and market, which helps you bag a better offer. You can work internationally since lead is accepted throughout the world. You can work on international projects easily. This is uh, especially good for people living in Asian countries with that you can get exposure to Western way of working and through this credential. It also helps you self in self-promotion. If you have your own firm or a business, such credentials gives you edge over your competitors and the cli clients are also assured that they are hiring a knowledgeable professional with internationally reputed credential. So yeah, that's pretty much. If you like the video, do hit like and subscribe. We will soon be starting with the lead the necessary exam prep course completely free of course which will be available on the youtube do subscribe to our youtube channel as it will help us grow and make course on sustainability completely free as that is the need of the hour oh and do try this to, to try to scan this qr code through our instagram app just for fun and thanks and see you soon